Impedance is another word for resistance, except it doesn't have to be actual resistance. It can also be effective resistance of some component or subcircuit that we can just analyze as if it was a resistance. Impedance is used to describe actual or effective input and output resistance, which is important to know when connecting parts of a circuit together or when inserting a probe into the circuit, because you want the probe to behave as if it's not even there. But that's impossible. Now, when you're just measuring a basic circuit, circuit in a breadboard with a multimeter, you really don't need to know its input impedance because it's going to be good enough. And if you're using an oscilloscope like mine, your probe just has an impedance selector right there on the probe. But when you're using a non-standard type of probe, such as a component, or you're using a probe in a non-standard way, like trying to measure the voltage of a charged capacitor, or when you're measuring some sort of circuit that's a little more delicate, even mega ohms start to matter at that point. So it's still important to know and be able to measure your impedance when you can't necessarily just look in the manual. Thankfully, there's a whole bunch of ways to do it, and here are four incredibly easy ones that take advantage of the fact that the probe is a voltmeter. So this is our probe, our multimeter, voltmeter, oscilloscope probe, component, whatever. Whatever's a measuring voltage, there it is. The easiest way is to just straight up measure the impedance. This is going to depend on what your probe is. In this case, my probe is a multimeter, so this will work just fine because in voltage mode, the multimeter just acts as a resistor and it measures what happens to that resistor. I have another multimeter, so this requires a second multimeter, but in resistance mode, the multimeter puts out a voltage which it uses to measure this resistance. And incidentally, this is going to measure the voltage that the resistance meter, the ohm meter, is putting out. So I use two multimeters here. My resistance meter measured one mega ohm of input impedance on my probe. That's actually not that high, but again, it's more than high enough for basic circuits. And just for fun, when the reading stabilized, it was putting out 686 millivolts across my voltmeter, which is suspiciously close to a diode drop. I wonder if that's just coincidence. But maybe for whatever reason, this method won't work for you. If it doesn't, but you do still have an extra multimeter, you can use current instead of resistance. You'll need a separate power supply. You'll have your probe connected and you'll measure the current with another probe. Once again, this second probe I used was a second multimeter. And in current measuring mode, the multimeter basically has no input impedance at all. It has a little bit. It does have a very, very small voltage drop but it's minuscule compared to what it's measuring. So we can treat it as if it's not there. What you have is a power source of known voltage, or in fact, the voltmeter will measure the voltage, once again, taking advantage of that. So you read the voltage off of here, or just you know use whatever voltage you had. If you're using a battery, you wanna measure it directly. If you're using a power supply, it's whatever you set it at. And then you measure the current, use Ohm's law, Voltage equals current times resistance, so voltage over current equals resistance. The voltage this multimeter reads and the current this multimeter reads is the current going through here and the voltage of the power supply. Now the issue with this is my multimeter could not read very, very small currents very well. I had to turn my power supply all the way up to the maximum of 32 volts just to make sure I was getting an accurate reading on here. Because this is a mega ohm, so 32 volts means it was 32 microamps. So this method is better for a smaller input impedance, but it worked here. I was able to measure it well enough. I got 32 and 32, so it was the expected result. But now let's say you don't have a second multimeter. Let's say you have one multimeter and basic supplies and you still want to measure it. You you can do that. So for this method, we're really going to use and exploit the fact that this is a voltmeter by using a potentiometer, perhaps a trim pot. Now you're going to need a trim pot that's pretty big, you know, one or two mega ohms would be great, and you may not have that lying around, but let's say you do. So here's your potentiometer, variable resistor, whatever. You just connect it across, and the trick here, look here, this is a voltage divider. And you might think that you need to measure this with a probe, but it's not because you have this measuring its own voltage. Adjust the potentiometer so that this voltmeter is reading half the supply. So if I put a five volt supply here, adjust this potentiometer until that reads 2.5 volts. That means this potentiometer is at the same value as this voltmeter. Half and half voltage divider, it cuts the voltage in half. I was using a two mega ohm trim pot and the dial was about halfway. 
so I knew it was about one mega ohm. And once you've got this potentiometer set, you could just use this meter, except in resistance mode, assuming it's a multimeter, use your multimeter to measure whatever the trim pot is. And if you can do that, if you can measure the resistance, then you may not need to have it be exactly half. You could just do your Ohm's law and figure out the other resistance. But let's say you don't have a large potentiometer like that, and you may not. If the input impedance was 10 mega ohms, I certainly would not have been able to use 2 mega ohms, which was my biggest one. And trying to do trim pots in series to increase the resistance is goofy. But you can use regular resistors. In fact, you could use a couple of them. Basically, what you want to do is you hook up your probe in series with a large resistor, whatever you've got, and make sure this is reading. It doesn't have to read half. We're not going to try and read half now. We're trying to just get it so that it's in the middle-ish, because if it's next to a rail, we might not be getting an accurate result. But if it's in the middle-ish, then these will be on the same order of magnitude of resistance. You know, if this could be one mega ohm, this could be two, and that'll still give you a good result because it's, it's within the same ballpark. So if you're not getting a good result, add another, add another, and all you have to do is make sure each of these individual resistors can be measured by whatever multimeter you have. If your multimeter can't measure a mega ohm, then use 100k ohm resistors. You'll just need to use a bunch of them. You can use different value ones, whatever. You just keep adding resistors and adding resistors in series until this is reading somewhere, you know, if it's a 5 volt supply, make it 2 volts, 3 volts, 4 volts, somewhere in there that you know it's in the same ballpark. Then you notice what voltage it read. You measure the resistance of each of these resistors and add them together. Don't just go by what's on the package. You know there's a variance. So just measure each one, add it together, and you get one big resistor. And then you use your Ohm's law. Let's do the math this time. So everything is in series, which means everything has the same current going through it. The probe and the conglomerated resistor. All the little resistors together into one resistance. The voltage across the meter or probe or whatever equals this current times the resistance of the meter or probe. The voltage across the resistors, which I'll just call V2, is the current times the total resistance of that, the effective single resistor that they all add up to. And then because we have current here in both of them, we can just do the math, say Vm over Rm equals I, but that's the same thing here, so V2 over R2. So we don't need I anymore. We're trying to find the resistance of the meter or probe here. We're trying to find this. So let's flip it over. Resistance of the meter over the voltage of the meter. Nice ratio equals the resistance of the resistors over the voltage across the resistors. Then we can multiply that voltage over, and we're left with just the resistance we don't know. And I can make this a little prettier. The ratio of the voltages times the resistance is the impedance. So the voltage of the prober meter divided by the voltage over the series resistance times the series resistance equals the input impedance we're trying to find. Your supply voltage equals the drop over the probe plus the drop over the other resistors. So the drop over the other resistors is the supply voltage minus the probe voltage. It's just the leftover. So this V2 is actually V supply minus V meter or probe. And as you can see, if you have half of the voltage on the resistance and half of the voltage on the meter, then this is going to be Vm over Vm, which is 1, which means the two resistances are equal, which matches seeing half the voltage on each one. So there you go. You can just do this math. And there you have it. No matter what kind of probe or component you have, no matter what's going on in your circuit, one of these methods is going to work for you to figure out the input impedance of whatever your input device is. So with that, I'll be seeing you.